Hello everyone and welcome back to my European Space Agency RP1 career in Kerbal Space Program 1.12. In the previous video we had some serious trouble with the Arcturus VL version of our launch of the Maya spacecraft and I got some suggestions. One suggestion was that I accidentally uh, had the non-moving fins on and no we have the all moving fins on. Those are fine. Um, another suggestion was to replace them with fixed fins. Uh, that's tempting because uh, things are obviously overcorrecting and these are moving too much. Uh, maybe we can just reduce how much they can deflect and that'll help. Uh, but because I don't want to get rid of all control authority from them, they might be useful in that situation. Our center of mass and center of lift aren't too bad, uh, to be honest, uh, even as the tank strain. But uh, perhaps we can help the matter out by making sure that this tank drains first. So, and then this tank drains second. So I'm not entirely sure why we have a problem, but yeah, maybe it's just over control by Smart ASS. And I think I'm going to try and control it manually without Smart ASS. I'll just control it with SAS and see how that goes. And yeah, anyway, we'll save edits here. It's just got nine days left to go. We are continuing with space planes. When you think about it, it's obviously a challenge, and so that's what makes it worthwhile. I'm not interested in doing things that are easy, and to be honest, all these probe things are easy. Uh, I could do these. I have no question in my mind that I can do all of these. It'll be a breeze. Uh, Plutonium, the one thing that might be a little bit tough are the Mercury landing and the Pluto landing. But everything else is just... Uh, maybe the little rover, but seriously, um, I've done that before too. I've pretty much done everything else before. So, yeah. Uh, really playing around with the space planes is the interesting bit, especially with the constraints that RP-1 has placed on it, it being a lot more dangerous here in RP-1 <laughs> than I've ever had it before. And so, I'll continue doing it because it's a challenge. Uh, and actually, it's fun recovering the space planes from the destruction of the rocket. Uh, an abort like that is actually fun to do. So, yeah, we'll try it. I'm going to duplicate this one because I really want to have the Arcturus VL work. It's much more efficient. And also, when we're talking about the European Space Agency, they had the Hermes idea, right? Uh, the, the Ariane 5 was supposed to be for the Hermes rocket, and we've almost got an Ariane 5 here. It's not quite an Ariane 5, but we've got the Volcane engine on the bottom, and we've got two boosters. They're just not the same. They're actually Viking engines. So we're close, but we're not quite there. So I think it's in line with what they would try to do. So with that being said, let's finish this. Uh, do we have somebody trained up? Uh, we want to go to orbit. And maybe this will not make it. Uh, we can hope that I can continue to recover it safely. Well, Mohammed will be ready in two weeks. So we'll just wait. Well, we have to roll out anyway. Yeah, just about the right time. It's also locking the space plane's control surfaces. Uh, we'll do that on the pad. Okay, so yes, this does have the canards in particular. So we're just going to set this control deflection to zero for now. So we have that done, SAS on, throttle up, and let's see, ignition, and launch. Doesn't want to go off to the side for a reason, let me try and use atmospheric autopilot. It is really hard to handle. Uh, yeah. That is weird. That is weird. I don't know why it's so hard to handle it. Oh, we lost both. Okay, well, actually...
I don't like the uh, deploy shoot, deploy shoot. I don't like the circumstances there. Controlling it manually, it felt it was going all over the place. And we locked those control surfaces at the top this time. Loop. <laughs> I actually stuck the landing this time. All right. So I'll scrap this one. We'll stick to the launcher that we have. The larger launcher will have to do. And we'll try for the orbital mission again. The Vulcane incidentally had six degrees of gimbal. It's not bad. Okay, so here we are with Thomas O'Connor, looking like Chris Hadfield, and let's see if he can get to orbit and back. Parameters are very simple, and we just have to stay in orbit for an hour, really. But we do have to land horizontally, and ignition, and launch. Well, no problems here, past 30 kilometers now. Well, let's see if I have the right engine cut out. Yes, I do. Okay, booster set. Okay, separation and ignition. All's well so far. Okay, we'll round that out in a bit. Plenty of Delta V left. Okay, we're in a nice one and a half hour orbit. And we'll stay here for a day. Even though that's not required. We've satisfied... Somehow we've satisfied land horizontally with a descent angle below 10 degrees already, so that might be one of those things where they said that this particular program had an issue and it still has an issue. <laughs> uh, we'll aim to do that anyway. So if it gets satisfied with uh, Thomas parachuting down, I'm not going to complain necessarily. Now it seems like at the fifth level of time warp, uh, it consumed too much. It wasn't recharging on the daylight side. Uh, we are facing the sun on the daylight side, it just wasn't recharging. But we'll still make the day. Okay, so we'll be deorbiting on this next orbit. And I'll go for 40. 42 seemed to explode the tail engine. That's negative 40 kilometers periapsis. We'll also dump, dump the remaining hydrolocks so that we are not so heavy this time. We might keep some, some in the back though. Maybe that would be good for balance. I don't know. I don't know if that's necessary or not. Okay, ignition. Oh yeah, we've got an extra 445 right now. Let's just say a re-entry limit of 9.5 tons is what we're going for here. Does need some up pitch here. And the engine's overheating. <laughs> well, and the cockpit's overheating, but we'll see. I mean, that's how it is. The engine somehow dissipates the heat better than the cockpit, though. It doesn't, like, retain it in the same way. Come on, start going up before the engine overheats. Or explodes, I mean. It's already overheating, but before it explodes... Oh, now the body? Oh, no, I think it's the wings again. Those also cool off as we go up. So, I think the engine survived. It's still a matter of us surviving, though. Now 
not only do we have to not overheat, we also have to not end up over water, ideally. Okay, well, we're coming back down again. The engine's starting to overheat again, but generally it's most dire on the first hit of the atmosphere. This time we're going slower and it probably won't blow up. <laughs> probably won't blow up. Uh, it's just the cockpit's accumulation of heat that we have to worry about. Our track seems okay. We m might be going too far again. It's possible. Not using much pitch at all, so that's not a problem. I hesitate to try and pitch up in order to slow us down more, though. I don't want to mess with anything. It's going well so far. Then again, if we keep going up, uh, the heat accumulation on the cockpit might be too much. I guess I'll try to pitch up a little bit. 42 seems to use half our pitch authority. I'm going long by about 120 kilometers right now. I think I'm gonna try the brakes. Yeah, it's much better this time. Not too sure why. I guess it might be our vessel mass. Dumping the fuel is probably a good idea. Uh, yeah, we're going longer this time. I just need to get it onto land, really. I'm not even worrying. I think we're too far from the Space Center this time. I'm going to try and straighten it out and then take control. This is a little bit earlier than I normally would. Yeah, we're quite a ways away. We're out here. Land is here. Okay, breaks in because we're generally pointing in the right direction now. And let's go ahead and light the engines. They don't like to be lit down below very clearly. And might as well light those too. 330 kilometers. <laughs> That's tough. Okay. No more RCS, please. Don't know where that 28 meters per second comes from, though. Oh, now we've got the overheating indicator on the cockpit. Give me a break. <laughs> Seriously. We're trying to glide here. We're only at Mach 2. Well, not even Mach 2. I think it's possible. It's possible. Oh, we're now subsonic and still more than 200 kilometers away, though. And I still can't see land. Well, oh, it stopped having the overheating indicator on the body there. Well, we're now at airliner heights, somewhat less than airliner velocities, 160 kilometers away. I would rate it as maybe possible. I think land is like right there. Maybe if we had dumped some food water and oxygen or something. That waste and wastewater doesn't need to be here. Well, it doesn't say, I mean, it does say land horizontally with a descent angle below 10 degrees. It doesn't say anything about returning to land, per se. Uh, how bad is splashing down going to be? We don't know. Is it going to be Miracle on the Hudson, or is it going to be worse? I'm really trying to get it over there, but... Mathematically, this is really, really hard. I guess this is the best glide I can do. 
I mean, that spot is inland somewhat. Well, I think I'm gonna deploy landing gear. That's an ominous black blob in front of me, though. Okay, at least we've got some light here. Okay, gently. And down. We're not using the drag chutes because we were already so slow. Alright, well we made it to land after all. And we did get the contract fulfilled. So let's recover Thomas. And it was a cooler re-entry than we normally get. So that's another thing. I guess we're just sticking with the Denon of A4. It seems like it works out for us. So the next thing we would have to do is rendezvous by space plane. One day, 12 hours. We can probably do that too. But let's do pick up the required one first. And I guess we'll pick up this optional one as well. But really, uh, Earth Space Station. We would like to rendezvous it with the Earth Space Station and then dock it with the Earth Space Station. So that's really what I want to do. This says work in progress and very buggy though. It needs four slots. Well, we've got to complete this Venus surface exploration first, but we've only got one contract to do for that. So let's get cracking on making that mission and getting it out there. Okay, so here's our little Venus lander. Uh, we've got the antenna, we've got the RCS ports there, probably a, a little bit too big. I think we can reduce the size of those. We've got parachutes that are uh, suited for Venus. Uh, we've got a controller here that can control this and this core here. But it keeps trying to give me 400 EC, even though I keep telling it that I want 10,000. And keep resizing it. And it keeps having 10,000, and then it resizes and has 400 for some reason. Anyway, uh, then we have this tank with these engines here. These are just the normal 3.6, whoops, uh, 3.6 kilonewton engines that we've been using. Well, 3.9 now. And uh, they, they don't provide enough to get to Venus, but that's all right. This stage will. And this stage is the normal Griffin 2 stage with the RZ-20s. And yeah, that's all good. But it just occurred to me why we were having the problem with the Arcturus VL. And so if we put the Arcturus VL on here, I think it's because we had the controller down here. And I wasn't controlling from the Maya spacecraft, I believe. Uh, I believe we weren't controlling from the top, and that's why. The reason I have the controller down here is because the controller is... We don't have a tooled 4 meter controller. Uh, they're all, at most, 3 meters. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this... It's like scratching an itch. Uh, we're probably going to try the Maya spacecraft on the on the Arcturus VL again. But this time we'll have the controller on top. We'll also have the controller here for this one. And we'll tool this. We have plenty of unlock credits, so tooling is no big deal. And we'll have 200 tons and that's, that's all right. Uh, okay. And so we'll tool a new controller at 4 meters. At that location, I don't want to tool a nose cone. That should that should have already been tooled, darn it. Let's just tool all that. Not much at all. Okay. So we have this Venus lander, and it's on this rocket, and it should be able to get there pretty easily. And it can be constructed on our smaller launch pad. But uh, propellant GSC is not okay. Why are you not okay, propellant GSC? Oh, uh, well, anyway, let's just upgrade it so that it is okay. Probably it's the extra um, Hydrolox that we have in the Griffin 2 stage. Renovate costs. Well, renovate, please. And then we'll build it. But we are also going to build a new version of the Maya spacecraft on the Arcturus VL, but we'll launch it uncrewed this time. 
Okay, we are here with the Venus lander launch with the Arcturus VL and we have to launch at night because it looks like our ejection longitude of ascending node is at night. And so with that, SAS on, throttle is up, ignition. And launch. Okay, booster set. We're carrying a heavier load than normal, so we are actually losing speed a bit here. But that should be okay, we're now gaining it again. Yeah, I'll just wait until after staging to do the fairings at this point, I think. It's finally gotten up to a high thrust to weight ratio. Okay, staging. And fairings. Our two RZ20s. We've got the internal comms, which are which is uh, UHF, but then we've also got the antenna, which is S-band, of course. Normal interplanetary thing now. It did give me 10,000 electric charge. I need that because we've got the solar panels on this portion. After all, they're going to break off in Venus's atmosphere. Okay, that'll do. 232 by 227 and we certainly have enough to transfer and probably we'll do a light capture before doing our descent uh, just to make things less harsh I don't want to descend directly into Venus's atmosphere uh, okay setting target and let's see for planner oh I should always set target afterwards I don't know why that is it used to not care but Okay, ASAP. Okay. Well, uh, that's fine. There was a lower option later, but we will take this. One annoyance is the fact that none of the adjustable heat shield seems to have a top that's just flat, so that it won't look like this tank is floating on top of it. And I looked for a structural part that would solve that, you know, maybe some sort of girder that could uh, sort of adapt between the heat shield and the tank. But they all have a lower heat tolerance than the tank. So, okay, ignition. I should have put extra RCS ports on this thing. We're using the RCS ports up there and that's actually not good. Ah, uh, I forgot about that. Okay, and separation. Uh, why is it 2.98 instead of 3? I asked for 3. <laughs> I asked for 3 tons. I didn't ask for 2.98. Okay, well, I'm gonna do a mid-course correction for that bit. I suppose a polar approach wouldn't be too bad. So after we do this 100, we want to do a light capture, which, well, we'll have that much at least. So for now, this will be all set. It's recharging and we'll add that alarm. And this Venus lander is on its way. Next time, we'll once again test the Maya spacecraft on the Arcturus VL, but this time we won't have any crew. And our contract is for a rendezvous, and I would like to finish this Venus contract off first, get rid of that program, and then we can focus on the Earth Space Station program, and then we'll have something for the space plane to rendezvous with. And then the next contract is for it to dock, so I would like it to dock to the space station. So that is the plan. So with this heading out, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.